Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor, continuing a video I just started, which was about Screen Junkies Plus, the app we did. A lot of you have been watching and asking me for this, so I wanted to make sure I did, gave you everything I could in this uh, installment to, to get on with it. Uh, but the last thing I want to do here is answer a lot of your questions. I put this out there a while back. Uh, again, hopefully you know what I'm talking about, Screen Junkies Plus, where we all sort of united and made these videos. I've, I've talked about Kevin. I've talked about Chris and Jeremy. I've talked about Nick Run Monday. I've did a video about Roxy. I, I've pretty much hit the gamut and, and gone through all the past people you've been asking about and trying to give you my insight. Uh, but you guys still had some questions here. So I want to go through and share it. Marcus, thank you, Marcus. I see the Marcus. He's an investor here. I love seeing you, man. Thank you for all the support you send. Uh, anyway, so we got a lot of comments. I want to make sure I get to the comments. Thank you, Joe. That's a nice comment. Uh, Stu, I really enjoyed Interns of Field. Truly great ideas. Love the talented. What was it like working with the series? What would you do differently? As I've said, like I'm very proud of that show. Um, and, uh, it was just a failure if we didn't promote it well enough, uh, Stu. And so I, what I would do differently was I would have, I would have clued the audience in earlier that we were working on it and what we were working on and gotten them excited for it. And I think that was a major, major problem on my end of assuming they would just be excited to pay for this big thing we did. Uh, we, I think it's easy to fall on set when everybody's laughing and enjoying something that you have a hit on your hands. And it's a failure that I've learned through other, and talking to others who've had similar experiences of, that environment's not the real environment. You got to wait until you actually see audiences reacting to it and it's all put together. And while I'm still proud of it, and I think it's, it turned out well, especially since it gets better, uh, making pilots is hard. A TV pilot, writing, getting all the information, meeting the characters, new characters. Even though we had a parody element that helped us, um, I would have, I since we were doing this for our audience, I want to include them in earlier. That's the biggest takeaway I can offer. Um, don't hold back. I don't think I have. Thank you, Mateo. Was there a point where Screen Duckies Plus was actually profitable? Uh, not to my knowledge. We spent way more than we made. Even if they were goosing the numbers a bit, we didn't last long enough to make profit. No one was expecting to make it in the first year. Uh, but from what I gathered, no. I don't, I don't think so. Again, I'm speculating on all this, a lot of this speculation on what I remember or what I was told or whatever. But um, no, it wasn't profitable. What was the worst? Who was the worst to work with during it? Honestly, no. I mean, I guess Nick, just because Nick became such he became such a drama king himself. Uh, he just made made things harder than it needed to be. So dealing with him was probably, and I've talked about that show. Dealing with him was probably the hardest. Was there resistance to move the subscription uh, to the subscription, or where most of the screen duckies in favorite? Uh, yeah, no, I remember we weren't. All none of us were sold when it was first pitched to us. But when they sold us on the idea of premium content and budgets, you know, and then they gave us more money and, and we thought, well, if this works, we can get paid. Uh, that, that That's ultimately swayed all of us. Um, but I was honest with them. I told them of the warnings and they got it. Uh, I feel like we were on the same page. Uh, there was a short start. Jeremy did a collider too, literally moving from Seattle. I think collider. Oh, he's talking about, yeah, we did the cover, Jeremy. Uh, did Screen Junkies get preferential treatment from Defy? Seems like Screen Junkies Plus was their biggest investment into original content. Y yeah, I mean, sure, Screen Junkies was was popular. Remember, Screen Junkies Honest Trailers. We were doing, we were getting Ryan Reynolds and all these famous people in the building. Uh, yeah, we were getting we were getting some special treatment for sure, but we were delivering right. But they also had Smosh, and Smosh got two movies and a YouTube series uh, that they did through YouTube Premium. Uh, Smosh was was treated even bigger. They had higher budgets all the time, more staff. Uh, Smosh was delivering more numbers and such. So, you know, they, there were others there. And Clever was doing what, pretty well at the time. I would say Clever, Smosh, and Us were the three biggest brands that they were paying most attention to. Uh, and then there were Smosh Games, part of Smosh. But yeah, no, we, I mean, yeah, they, they were investing in us because we started to take off. And uh, that's why I stayed, because I thought, cool, we're building something, right? And I, a lot of, lot of lessons learned. I, I would have tried to get more ownership or built something of my own sooner. Uh, Production-related, uh, what... Uh, when did you guys make a profit? <laughs> Raz, as I told you, we did, did we see profit? No, not to my knowledge. Uh, what were the biggest production challenges you guys faced? That's a good question. Uh, I can I can say we we didn't have a lot of space uh, because the company had so many other brands and people working there. We had to work with what we had, and so we as Screen Junkies we had this. We moved locations when we merged. Uh, Break Media and Allen merged. We moved moved studios, and we got sort of this weird long studio that we took over we had one studio room that was small and then we took over this other room and then we, our, our the goal there was to sort of make it uh something else uh and so we had to use this narrow area and so 
one side was like movie fights and that format, which we could change the, the screens and the lighting behind it to sort of be something else when need be. It became after the fight. It became TV fights. We could sort of change the posters. And then the other side was the doesn't hold it up Monday Night Raw side. And so it was a sets that we could easily replace things. So production had to be very clever and props to everybody involved in that. So many producers and people who were, were manning all that. Thank you, everybody. Um, Juwan, Kevin, I mean, I don't want to miss people. There's some Warren... Uh, everybody and everybody was involved in that. Uh, there, there were so many people behind the scenes helping make sure all that worked. Uh, Brent, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting people, but uh, a lot of people who were involved figuring out how to like sort of get all that done. And uh, we had to make sure we were creatively using that space to our advantage. And then right in the middle of both sort of sets was the control room. Uh, it broke. Um, and so the control room is in the middle, so that way we could have um, uh, access live streaming from either or. And then if you watch certain movie fights, you could see sort of we would show both areas at once. Uh, but that's how we – so from a productions challenge, we had to deal with that. We had, we had other – we had like a small uh, area where we built sets. Like what does it hold up uh, – sorry, not does it hold up. Uh, movie games and what's in the box was in our bigger area, but we couldn't own it. So we'd have to look it out for a week or a couple days in advance. So when Kevin or Jeremy was in town, we would bring in our crew to you know build the set again and stack shoot. A bunch of episodes. So anytime we got one of those big sets, we didn't want to just set up the set and then move away. We had to prep like 10 episodes is how we sort of cost, were more cost effective. So when we had the crew and the set and everything built up, Jeremy showed up and we banged out, you know, five episodes, six episodes if we could. He was there for a day or two and he would just, we'd have everything ready to go. Episode one. All right, cool. We did it. Episode two. Great. We did it. And we try to make them evergreen enough or plan ahead to know what was coming so we could plan our scheduling. So there's a lot of production scheduling. So everybody, all the producers, Max and everybody, they did great work to try and work with what we had because we did not have a lot. So good question, Raz. Uh, is Hal Rednick a good dad? Yeah, Hal's fine. Does he deserve to be slapped in public? No, no one does. Uh, he was good. Uh, did you accept that Screen Duckies flew too close to the sun after the success of Honest Trailers movie fights? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I can see what you're saying. Uh, what lessons would you want creators to learn from the failure? I, I, look, I got into a lot of that Bat of Gotham in this part one, so go check that out. I'll put it at the end of this. You can go watch that if you want to watch from the big, very beginning. Uh, but I feel like I've shared it. it again, it's, we didn't treat it like a fan club, and we should have. Uh, and, and we, I think, could have done better if we just downscaled a lot of our stuff. Uh, so thank you for that question. But I, I, I did tune you into that script because I remember you asked that. Uh, nothing worse than Monday night. Hey, come on. Uh, sorry, he's just the worst. Can you talk about some of the feedback? I did. Uh, so you can check that one out. If you missed that one, there's a video all about my experience with Nick and Monday Night Raw. So go click on that one on the playlist at the end. This is nice. A refresher, sort of recap it all. Uh, what happened to you? I was always what, uh, teaching. Uh, well, I was, I'm on your side now. True, true to your channel. Thank you, Eric. appreciate that. Well, we get the shows from SJ+. Plus. I miss Stuckman's first and worst. Jeremy's movie games and flick picks movie versus movie. Yeah, not there. I don't know. I, I doubt it. I don't know if you know anyone saved them all. Uh, I'd be curious. It, it is weird. They didn't, but they've done a weird thing in sort of avoiding me and my involvement at all costs still. And I think that was a bad move on their part. They appeased a small community and uh, they didn't think the greater picture and they could have, they could, we, there were, there were ways to fix things. There were ways to take accountability. There were ways to learn their way to make lessons and uh, not not endorse or allow, but there were things they could have done. But now because they just sort of sprinted away from it all, there's so much content that I, I don't know if you can ever use it. And that sucks. It sucks. Uh, were staff paid extra during Screen Turkey's plus two-year span, or was the YouTube algorithm change more impactful than you presumed? Uh, and the cast were working extra to try and make greater success. Uh we did try to pay them, I think. I think when Screen Junkies Plus stuff, usually the hosts the hosts were all paid on Screen Junkies Plus stuff. Uh, and I think they did eventually start try to pay some guests on TV fights, et cetera, like a little bit. But you got to remember, we didn't have money. We weren't, it's, even though it seemed like we were making money, we weren't. We were losing money on Screen Junkies Plus. It was an investment. But, you know, we, they had to, we had to try to make things, but I don't actually remember. If, I mean, the hosts did. We all made sort of separate deals, especially if we had a reoccurring show on. Plus, we we were we were dealed separately, and then me and Spencer Dan, we had a separate deal where we were reward. We were paid, you know, a new contract, a two-year contract, and we were paid bonuses if we hit certain milestones of subscribers, which they never paid us. Um, do you feel the addition of Kevin Smith, Jason Mewes blew the budget? Most of the content creators have successful YouTube streams. How was the finances working there? No, they didn't, they didn't blow the budget. I mean, they were, they cost us more money than a lot of other ones, but I think that allowed us to have cred. They gave us their celebrity name and it was a good show and it's doing really well on his own channel. I did a video about Kevin. I don't know if I loaded it yet, but you'll, it, it's there. Uh, it'll be there. 
But uh, no, I, I don't think he blew the budget. He, he cost more, but I, I think he he helped elevate us more than a lot of other stuff we did. To say we had an exclusive show with him actually did get us more meetings with other companies and celebrities and helped us tremendously. So I was grateful he did it. I actually want to state I actually don't watch Grinoki since you left. I felt like I'd stay all in directionless. Well, Dan, do we got to do? I'm not here to bash them. Do we want, but uh, I don't watch it. Uh, as a huge, I'm ready to see this. Great. Um, any other thing from Iconic from you? Thank you, Paul. Uh, who do you regret hiring? I didn't hire April. I hired JT. So JT, a lot of people think I hired her. She made it sound like she was an employee. She wasn't. Uh, would you do a movie pitch show? Yeah, I, I would do another movie pitch show. We try, we'll probably incorporate that into uh, Nerd Wars. Um, it doesn't exist anywhere that I know of, Walter, sadly. Um, you haven't watched, is it not funny more? Okay. A lot of people, I'd love to just chronicling how it was made and why it failed and who are the ones that were lazy and who really tried. Uh, everyone really tried. I do think a lot of everyone, even Nick, we were all trying. Um, but I chronicled it in the first, the, the first video I did fills you all on that. Who among screen actors were the biggest pricks to work with and who were the most fun to work with? I don't want to get into that game. Uh, I, I've said it. Uh, I've said my piece. I'm moving on. But back then, it was that. I, I haven't spoken to the man. I don't know if he's the same man. Uh, wish him well. Uh, how many subscribers would have been necessary to not operate at a loss? How many subscribers did you have? Uh, as again, I talked about that in the first video. They never seemed to get more than 20,000. Our bump was supposed to be 25,000, so I never saw a bump. Uh, were they being honest? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, to oper not operate at a loss? Um I haven't. I can't do the math, but it was. We weren't. We weren't doing very well, and it wasn't picking up because we didn't have enough content. We sort of hit our plateau, and it was clear we're gonna have to spend a lot more money to increase that number, and we weren't making enough money from that. So I, I don't know the answer to that, because you have to spend money to to get more there. So to operate at a loss, we would have to spend more to get it, and then we never cracked how much we needed to spend to get there. We needed to spend less, make less shows, and only do the after credit. You know, the movie fights live and some of those shows. And then probably netted out where we could have actually seen some profit then. Um, and they just they didn't want to do that fan club approach. I remember Screen Geeks Plus, we tried it out for a while, but we really mostly just watched movie fights. It was the best of the bunch. Honestly, that's my point. That's what fans really were like. Man, seeing it live and having the community there, that was the reason it worked. Um, stuff like that. Alicia and Chris are cool. Everyone else, yeah, well, okay. Uh, it was a few channels before they went, okay. Profile makes you laugh. Uh, oh, sorry. I subscribed. Uh, first and worst. Does it hold up? Shame it didn't work, but it was great while well, it lasted. Thank you. Does it hold up? Was a great show. It was one of my favorites. Spencer really prepared that. It was. I, I loved Spencer's take on that. That was and getting the filmmakers to show up, getting John Turtletob to show up for Does Three Ninjas show up? And he was sort of so like, you brought me here for this movie. Like I've made National Treasure and uh, big movies. Like you want to talk Three Ninjas? Uh, that one was my favorite. It was so great. And, and I, I wanted to put that on YouTube and it never made its way, but they should, that's a show that they could pr put those up on YouTube and it probably would do well. Uh, and they could continue to do that show. So I, I don't know why, I don't know what's going on with them. Very strange. Maybe they will put that one up at someday. If they have those, they should, those were fantastic. They could rebuild that set and have Spencer do those, uh, once a week. Um, how many subscribers did you have at launch? Uh, I don't know what it was at launch. I told you what it was total. Uh, Monday Night Raw, I've told you that. And what's in the box? We've gave you both of those. Also, anything about Ken Knapsack's ponytail would be great. Nothing could talk about that. You guys seen it. He had a very epic ponytail. Nick would always make fun of it. I could never tell if he was just being nice or actually being a bully. It was, it was always hard to tell with him. Uh, thank you, Rams, for being a subscriber. Can't wait. Uh, where did they upload it? I don't know where they uploaded it. Uh, missed those days, collapsed to, uh, look at that ensemble. It was a pretty good time lineup. Um, was there anyone you were desperate to get on board who might've taken it to the next level, but you were satisfied with the lineup you got? Was there wasn't anyone else that I'm like, we should have had that person. I mean, we, we tried and went, there's nothing I can think of. I mean, that was on, that was and close. Like, um, no, I mean, everyone we sort of approached was either interested or, it, we the, the higher levels we didn't really get access to go anybody we asked did ultimately sort of join us um people of that level so i can't think of that anybody in that um i think uh no joe star no he wasn't in that thank god <laughs> i miss this whole group john's voice is the only thing left uh spencer would be if he wasn't neutered i, I don't watch it i've seen a couple uh, when they make me watch it on the streams. Do you think the HR department intentionally let you fail, not knowing that it was uh, doing shady financial things, or was it all just a play to remove senior creative and save money? 
I, I got to be careful. I can't get into certain things, but um, no, I don't think anyone intentionally. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I mean, look, public stuff came out that has nothing to do with me that I guess I can. I, I didn't know a lot of that stuff, uh, the stuff that was going. I mean, I knew some stuff, but uh, I mean, I knew like the, subscri- the YouTube thing they were doing. Um, it wasn't like sketchy. Like people knew what they were doing, but it, it seemed, it seems that they were using that, that money, that pass through money that was getting through the network to make it seem like it was their profit. And that, that was a big no, no. And that was, that was clearly where things got sketchy. Allegedly from what I've gathered of others, I wasn't there when all that came loose. So I mean, it is what it is, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the intentionals were. I mean, I know they knew what was real and what was not. I showed them the evidence. Uh, so take that as you will. Uh, I don't think there's a way to recover the content. I mean, you'd have to ask them. I don't know. I, I don't know who even owns it anymore. How did Roxy get his job? She was good on TV. Uh, she was good t- on TV topics. Uh, yeah. Mark even says, uh, Jonathan disagrees. And then we had one more here. I just to make sure I got everything. Um, fan fights, uh, rewatch. I, I always try to rewatch them. It's difficult. You think about the fan episodes. They were fun. And then who came up with the showstopper? I don't remember. The showstopper was a fun sort of a mix up for movie fights. And that was a very fun, I, we were just trying to like borrow as many wrestling sort of themes and things we could do. And that one was really fun. Showstopper was one I, I did really enjoy because we were just trying to mix up the format. So it wasn't the same over and over and over. Um, and the fan fights was another way to do it. The problem was they weren't always good. And so we were just worried about like some fans, they think they're good and they're not. So we did our, our best to try and uh, cast them right. Um, but when we did a fan fight, I, I gotta say, we, they, they impressed me. The fans we did get impressed me. Is there, was there blood bud between Screen Hockeys and Max Landis? I tried to do a show with Max, actually, a pitching show that I'd still love to do somewhere, someday. Uh, as for Max, I, look, I didn't know any of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes and the alleged stuff that happened to him. He was always very nice to us, always showed up when we needed, was always nice to everybody on the crew, so creative on that show. I loved him as a movie fights contestant and the Comic-Con appearances. He just delivered, and, and his pitches were so great. He would pitch us movies he was pitching, and I remember his Pokemon pitch before they took over in his power. Like He was a good pitcher. He had some really cool ideas, so I liked him in that regard. As for the other stuff, I don't know what's real, what's not. None of my business. I didn't like reading it, to be honest, but I, I can't judge the guy because I don't know. Um, you guys have to make that judgment on your own. I, I just haven't heard him see deny enough of it. Uh, we've talked a few times, but I've sort of wished him well and moved on. Um how was Alicia? Alicia's great. I have no issues with Alicia. And Alicia was one of those people who actually, I felt like, thank God she was honest. Alicia was like, nothing happened with me. Uh, but I feel for all these girls. So I understand why she said what she said. Um, but, um, never had a problem with Alicia. She's such a pro. I'm so proud of her and the amazing stuff she's done. Uh, she's, she worked her butt off to get to where she's at and, and to be a, a classic film lover, um, with Turner and, and, Go, you know, being on the Oscar red carpet and stuff. Bravo, Alicia. Good for you. You were you were such a so sweet and genuine and nice and uh, gracious to us all. So thank you for everything you did. And I'm sorry we lost touch. Uh, Neps, Ken, Ken was funny. Ken was great. I, I talked about it a little bit in the last one. You can go get a little Ken story, but you know he was a lead, he was more loyal to Christian, and that ultimately was a bummer. Um, I should have known that, but uh, it was what it was. I, I, I he wasn't the best producer. I'll be honest. He wasn't because he didn't have a lot of experience. So I was trying to give him that experience. And uh, then he just turned and joined Collider when they had money. Uh, have you talked to Kevin Smith since this all happened? Sadly, no. I did a video about it, putting it all out there. I uh, Some people might try to be mean about it. I, I got no beef with them. I'm disappointed. But I understand where it's, if that's what it is. I'm speculating where he's coming from. What can I do? Uh, just keep doing what I'm doing. Be genuine. And I hope some point. We can reconnect. That would be nice. I would I would be open to it. But I, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I wish him the best. Him, his whole team, Jay, all those people. Uh, did you have any good ideas that weren't, weren't given a chance to flourish? There, we, there was one really good idea we never got to do, which was a follow-up to Interns of Field. It was going to be a spinoff called Street Level, starring Casper Von Dean as the Hawk Guy character who was going to do like a – it was going to be like an Arrow meets Daredevil parody show. Uh, and we wrote some scripts, had an outline. It was it was funny. There was an invisible jet factory scene. I thought I still thought was funny. Uh, it would have been good. It would have been better than interns. We, Casper was down. Uh, it it would have been a cool. I think that one could have actually gotten us the attention. We were we were just gonna go do it, and then ultimately they just didn't want to fund it. And we we pitched it some other outlets, but because interns didn't perform and you guys didn't watch it, that sort of killed everything else. <laughs> but I think we would have learned and and cr- just destroyed that one. It would have been. Knocked out of the park had we been able to make that one. 
Uh, what was the most stressful setting up producing the old movie fights? Uh, just the topics and the guests and making sure that the guests and the topics would connect. Uh, it's still a problem today with nerd wars, <laughs> but it's not as easy as it looks. You got to base it off of what are you guys going to click on? What's the topic? Can these fighters that we booked fight those topics? Uh, it wasn't always easy. And that was part of the problem of like getting good guests and making sure they were there and not just putting random people in there who couldn't. Cause if they weren't genuine or were passionate or didn't know, it always showed in the, and the episode sucks. Um, what happened to Andre's show? It just died. He did a few times and no one was watching it. And I just don't think he cared because he realized no one was watching it. We weren't paying him that much. Just fell apart. Uh, the creation of Flickbait, uh, What's in the Box. We talked about how What's in the Box. Flickbait, I don't remember how it started, but I remember pushing that one big because I just thought the energy in that show was fun. And I th once we came up with that premise of what if we each have a bit we just try to do each week, it was just fun to hang out with them at the end of a week. We Sometimes we're drinking I just wanted that energy. I thought this is a fun energy of like friends kind of breaking each other's balls, having fun. It can be a place to sort of try silly things. If they work, maybe it becomes a series. And I knew that would it would do something which we lost with Screen Junkies Plus, which was try to build back the live audience and the community. Because when we lost Screen Junkies Plus, it definitely splintered a bit. So Flickbait was like a, a way to bring that back in a funner sort of way. And also I really wanted to call it clickbait culture. Uh, so I, I was a really big fan of that show and I'm, I was sad. I'm sad. I missed that one. I missed that was show. It'll never happen because the, we're never friends now, but, uh, it seemed like we were friends, didn't it? <laughs> it seemed, it did, but I guess they weren't. They always loved that broom being there instead of me. <laughs> uh, are you good on terms with Jeremy? I mean, yeah, we, I've, I've talked to them both. They're both good dudes. I support them. Uh, no, no bad blood. Uh, movie fights were the best. It, it was a fun time. Uh, what I, I told you that the roast, we talked about that. Uh, I remember you guys, the moonshine flats during Comic-Con. That was fun. That was an amazing party. It was so doing that first Comic-Con experience and doing it live and getting that venue. My God, those venues in San Diego Comic-Con during Comic-Con are expensive. We had sponsors uh, at that time, Ubisoft or might have been Samsung. We had sponsors that helped us book and budget those. But uh, man, that was that was the first one, especially at Moonshine Flats. I'll, I'll always remember that. That what a what an achievement to get it to that level. I remember standing there with the crew and I was getting teary, just like, look what we've built, guys. And so I think that's why there was a lot of pain when everything went down because it was like, how could you do this and everything? But it, it went both ways. But I, I, I'm so glad I at least have those memories of things we built and the level we got to because it was good. And who knows, we'll do it again. But um, it, it, that was a hard thing to do. You're competing with so many other platforms and things in Comic-Con. Uh, and uh, our event at Comic-Con, the Screen Junkie Central, was so much fun for the fans that got in there. Uh, and uh, views harder during Comic Con because there's so much happening, but uh, the sponsors were always happy. It was really really good experience. Uh, roast, we talked. I talked about that. Um, give us a prequel of everything started behind the scenes, putting together and finding all the right pieces. That was Screen Junkies. Well, maybe it's a good good. What you guys want that? You all, anybody else want that video? I can do that later on. I'm not going to do it anytime soon, but that's something to put in the uh, in the back burner. Um, noticing how much weight. Thank you. I've gained a little bit since. I, I, there was a point I was even lower, but thank you for noticing. I'm trying my best. Uh, anything on lawns? No. <laughs> he is what he is. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna knock him. I, I, he, he. It is what lawns is. Lawns. Mike Carlson. Love Mike. Such a funny dude. Uh, he, he is. He's friends with all those guys, so I can see he just doesn't like drama. I'm sure he just backed off and was like, whatever. Um. Why did Screen Junkies not take you back to the lawsuit? I mean, come on. They're not. <laughs> there's, that was never happening. It's never trying to have that happen. I didn't want to go back. I just want them to twig. I wanted them to acknowledge that there was another side to the story. And they they were they don't want to do that. Uh, Taylor, me and my wife used to watch religiously. Do you still communicate with any of the mass cast members? No, as I told them. But thank you for the support, Tyler. Um, and uh, someone like Jack Shipley. Jack, Jack didn't call. He was always calling in the show. He did, uh, but we had to ignore him sometimes. He called in a lot. Uh, Jack was one that has, did stay in touch afterwards, like off the record. I don't even, I, he just, he was like, didn't want to be seen with me because the fans were mad that he was still talking to me, but he tried. And then I, I had to block him at a certain point just because it was annoying me. And, uh, I, I don't know what his deal was. He just really wanted to tell me how wrong and, and a lot of stuff. And so ultimately I, I did, but Jack was a major fan. And I don't say that like meanly, but like he watched a lot. Uh, and, uh, we were grateful for it, but there was a times definitely we're like, dude, we got to let some other people call in. It's not your show. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we wanted to create an environment where it felt like it was his show or anybody's show, you know? Um, uh, I'm not going to read that last comment. That was mean. <laughs> but there you go. That's uh, pretty much uh, we, we got through everything in there. I'm making sure I didn't miss anything. I feel like I've covered 
uh, this topic. You guys have gotten the insight on Screen Junkies Plus. I've answered a lot of your questions. Uh, you can always hit me up on Twitter at Andy Signal right down there. Bing! Uh, Instagram, follow me there. I'm giving away stuff. A lot more stuff happening. Uh, but overall, final words on this. Yeah, it was it was an amazing experience. I'm glad we I got to do it. Glad to get these uh, lessons out to you guys so you can hear what happened. I appreciate all of you guys who have stuck to it and watched along the way. Who knows what will happen five years from now. Life is funny like that. I, you say you're never going to work with somebody. I try not to ever say that because you never say never. You know what? never know what goes down of what life events make someone mature or learn different sides of things. Uh, the experience I've had over the past three years, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. At the same time, I'm grateful for the lessons I have learned and how to be a better person, better husband, a better partner, better friend, better father. Um, I'm always working on it, still working on it. I'm, we all are as people, uh, but I'm great. The mistakes build us. You know what I mean? You can't learn without making mistakes. Uh, and so it takes falling sometimes to really get back up and build something better and find happiness. And so while Screen Duckies Plus was not a success by any stretch of the imagination, uh, it was an amazing learning experience that I'm uh, definitely going to be using for the rest of my days. So thank you to all of you who've subscribed. If you haven't already, uh, join this Popcorn Planet uh, family here. Hit that bell for all alerts, subscribe button. Make sure you are still subscribed. Smash the like button like I just did and leave a comment to help engagement. So grateful to all of you. Thank you for watching these pre-tapes this week. Uh, I'll be back with more content when we live in the studio soon. Uh, but so wish the best for all of you and thanks again for all your support take care guys watch these videos i'll put the playlist there on the left the playlist on the left has all the screen junkie stuff i've been talking about and the one on the right is random what did you get tell me down below thanks for watching